All right, well, I am back, and uh, I kind of goofed yesterday, and I meant to record um, after I'd painted it black and before I cleared it, and I uh, kind of forgot. So, anyway, uh, we have the clear on now. Uh, this thing has three coats of clear. Turned out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Got a couple, couple little spots. Nothing uh, too major. We do have uh, forks and everything turned out really good. Um, frame turned out really good. I'm very happy with that. That's the other side of the uh, chain guard. And it's a headlight bucket. That turned out pretty good. The only spot that I noticed was right here on the very top of this. I don't know if it's going to show up on this camera. You see a little bit of blistering there. That's, I, mean, I was using a fast activator since I had to open the doors while I was spraying, but I did get the parts still warmed to about 75 degrees before I'd open the doors. Then I just had them open long enough to spray without killing myself, and then I would shut them. And this is the only piece that has exhibited this, a little blistering. Uh, it's like the uh, either the clear coat dried too fast or something. I don't know. I'm the professional sprayer, so... But it's the only piece that did it. And here's the swing arm. Turned out pretty sweet. Got a little tape didn't do too good of a job of covering that up. But tanked, tank, tank. Turned out awesome. Very happy with that. We have one little spot right kind of where my finger's pointing. Where's my finger at? Right there. I didn't notice it, and I don't know if it was the clear that ran or if it was the black that ran. But I will try to let this, I'll let this cure for a couple days, and then I'll try to sand that down a little bit. Not that you'll really notice it. You got the, you got the rubber pad that sits right here, and this is kind of under the bottom side of the edge of the front of the tank. So, if you're looking at it this way, this is the front of the tank. So you're not going to really notice it. So, but this thing turned out pretty sweet. Pretty happy with it. And I had all kinds of issues with this black paint, but I don't know if it was a gun setting or I was getting a lot of overspray. So the, all these parts got about five coats of black paint on them. And I've never had that before. And I don't know if it's the type of paint. I've never used their, I've used their Speedo Coat Clear, um, but I've never used their paint. So I don't know if that was part of the issue, but either way, I mean, I think it turned out pretty freaking awesome damn happy with it I had not too bad of orange peel so a little bit in there but overall it turned out pretty sharp um, <clears throat> and one thing and it could be the gun that I use it's uh, the, I typically use a 1.3 tip gun for just a clear coat but I noticed when I started to paint this piece here and I don't know if you'll see it it had pretty heavy orange peel, and I was using them one of those cheapo $10 Harbor Freight guns, which, I mean, they're great for primer, and for the most part, they're good for base coat, but I didn't dork around with the settings too much on it. Um, I decided to go ahead and use my fine gun, which, like I said, I normally only use for my clear coat, but it definitely goes on a lot, lot cleaner and smoother. So, but if you do get one of those... Um, Harbor Freight guns, which I highly recommend. Uh, they're actually really, really super nice guns for the price. It is this Spectrum HTE gun. This gun here. If you get one of these, and it's the 1.3, uh, set your get it a, a, a get a pressure gauge, kind of like one of these that you screw on to the bottom of it and set your PSI to 22 and turn your volume out here to about three, three and a half. And then this is your fan, uh, same on the other gun. Um, I don't open the fan all the way wide because then you get a whole lot of overspray. And that may have been the problem with this gun, which is $10, but I can't beat them for 10 bucks. Um, they work really good, so uh, pretty happy with how the results have turned out. Got the 
letting the garage air out a little bit. So it's still uh, a little smelly in here from painting this stuff, but other than that, it's, it's not too bad. I would have liked to record while I was painting so you guys could see the cloud of fumes that this thing generates. It's terrible, but I did have a run in here. I don't think it's going to show up too bad. Um, I really need to look at a way to mount these fenders upright so I can set them up instead of hanging them upside down like this. Uh, I think the paint just goes on a lot better, especially when you're trying to you're trying to spray down here six inches away, and then you're trying to go all the way up, and it's taller than me, so you know. But for the most part, pretty happy. So now, next step will be I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll bring the tank in the house, let it sit for a few days, and I'm still waiting for the Eastwood uh, Chrome, got awful expensive Chrome stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to tape off this centerpiece here. So I'll just leave that black. And then we're going to tape down the center to keep that black. And I'll probably take the cap off. And then we'll shoot the sides with the chrome paint. And we'll shoot the cap with the chrome paint. And then we'll take the tape off. And then we'll clear it with their clear. So hopefully I don't have too much of a tape line uh, on the edge there. I know when I did the Trail Master... The tape line didn't really uh, show up too bad, so, but I mean, you can see the, and this has not been sanded, buffed, or anything, man. It has got some good depth to it. This is three coats of clear, and the clear that I use, one of the clears uh, that I use, I really like this one. Um, this is the Acme you know, Roadrunner. I think it's Sherwin-Williams, actually, but um this is the clear coat that i use the fc 720 and since i was since it's so cold out and open the doors this is i use the uh, fast hardener the fh611 i also got some medium with it too so once it warms up you know and i can open these doors anything above 70 you should use medium um when you get below 70 it's best to use a fast you know so so the so the professionals say anyway that's where we are so I'm going to let this sit for a couple days and good and harden up before I start touching anything. And I did take all the tape off and we will start putting this thing back together. So stay tuned. I'll be back. All right, guys, back at it again. Sorry, gnawing on some pizza. Okay, um, got this sanded. I've got the first coat of... Um, step one of the buffing process underway I've already sanded it with a thousand 1500 and then 2000 grit and then I started with step one of my buffing with a yellow pad and I'm using two different products and this is 3m's number one um, it's okay so I'm also using this Meguiar's uh, 105, which I'm almost out of. Well, actually, both of these. So uh, I like the Meguiar's a little bit better. And when I uh, went ahead and ordered a whole gallon of the uh, 100 grit, so you can see this piece here. This was sanded uh, with step one, two, and three, and then buffed with step one of using the. This was the 3M product. So. This back here was sanded, step one, two, and three, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 grit, or 2,500 grit. And then step number one, so looks pretty damn good. Of course, I can find every imperfection in it. Of course, I know there's a lot of you know, stuff left on it still. But what I'm going to do is here is the oil cover. Okay, so this has been sanded. Uh, with 1,500 and I think it was 2,000 I went to. Let's see here. Let me check my stamp paper. Yep, 2,000. 2,000 grit is what I went to. Now, uh, according to the specs for 3M and both uh, the Meguiar's and the 3M products, it'll get out 1,200 grit uh, sanding marks. So, and this is all already to 2,000, and you can see it looks pretty dull. So, Getting ready to sand this up, and before I do 
step two on this, um, I will do the step one, and I'm going to use the McGuire's and my yellow pad. Then I will go to um, this one here, which is Minzerna's uh, step number two. And then I'll go to step number three, which is I'm also using currently Mazurna's, but I think I'm going to go with a uh, switch to McGuire's. I like their products. They work pretty good. And for the price, uh, a gallon of the 100 grit that we got coming was, I don't know, 55 bucks for a whole gallon of the stuff. So anyway, just kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing here with this. And then I'm going to have a short pause while I fire up the uh, sander and, and do this with the 100, 105. And then I'll do another video of showing how it looks like after the fact. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, what I'm gonna show here is a couple of things. Um, this is the buffing pad, one of the yellow pads that I use. You see how mangled up that is? Uh, this one is not as dense, and it worked okay, but as you can see, it's pretty shredded, and that happens when you hit anything with an edge. So, that one's pretty much toast. Now, we got this one here. That's on the buffer still, and it's a cheaper uh, Chinese brand. I don't know which brand it is, but it's holding pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this uh, McGuire stuff, uh, the 105, onto this uh, pad, and I'll put a little bit on the uh, piece itself, just on the top part, and I'll kind of show you how it works. Now, I've seen it in a previous video, I showed you in a previous video. This is what the piece looks like. So this is sanded all the way up to 2,000 grit. Make sure I keep everything in the frame. All right, so we're using the McGuire's uh, Ultra Cut 105. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna spread it on here, pick up any excess, and I'll put a little bit on the pad. Let's see what she does. This is a uh, SPTA. I can't see the screen. So, get this spins around here. Of course, I'm upside down. But, uh, just got it on Amazon. It was a little three inch uh, buffing tool. All right, so you've seen what that piece looked like before. I hit it with the 105. And I use a microfiber towel on all my stuff while I'm buffing. I guess I need to do more of this. So anyway, let me turn the screen around here so I can see. 
Alright, so this is a piece now. And this is step one. And you've seen how it looked like before with 2000 grit sandpaper. And as a comparison, you can see the edges here because I haven't done the edges yet. That's what it looks like. And this is only step one. So once I've done, it should be pretty shiny. So I'll do step two, like I said, with this Menzerna, because I've got some more uh, McGuire stuff on order, but it won't be here until probably later this week. So I'll go ahead and get this done, and I will show you guys what it looks like after the fact. I mean, you should be able to maybe zoom in on some of these pictures here, this video, kind of see what it looks like after. Like I said, this is step one. You know, and you'll still see some light stuff, which I'll probably go over this again. Uh, get out a few more of the scratches in it. But it does a pretty good job, and I'm pretty happy with it. And like I said, I'm no professional. Don't claim to be. And I just do this as a hobby, working on these bikes. So, but that's turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And black, if you read anything on the internet uh, about painting black, it is one of the hardest colors to do, and I can see why. It is a total pain in the ass, but when it's done, and if it buffs out good, I mean, it looks amazing. It's got a, a whole lot of depth in it. This particular piece right here has got about three coats of clear coat on it, so I'm pretty happy with it. There's a few spots I still want to hit up on it, touch up, because it, you know, I don't know if it's showing up on the video, but like right around here, I can still see you know, a little bit of a dull spot. You know, this part here looks really good. So I'll hit it again and uh, be back here in a little bit. Okay, I uh, just kind of want to show I finished kind of step number one, buffing this. I'm going to kind of turn it around here so you guys can see. All right, now the way this sits on the bike is just like this here so obviously I'm concerned about the top part up here this side piece over here and this side piece over here because you'll be able to see those the most but as you can see uh, this is step number one and it's turning out pretty good looking even the bottom so now I'll do step two and step three, and then it'll be done. So I would record all this, but it's, it takes quite a bit of time. So, you know, because you put it on, you buff it, you wipe it off, you see the spots you miss, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. So, uh, but I mean, this is, like I said, I'm not a professional. This ain't going to be a show bike or anything. It's just our little Campus 60. But I just kind of want to highlight some of the work that goes into all that goes into you know painting these parts, and you don't have to do this. I mean, it's not mandatory uh, or required. I mean, it looked pretty good, you know, right out of the gate. So with painting it the first time, but when you paint stuff, you know, this is part of the procedure. You know, you sand it and then you buff it. So. I kind of just wanted to show some of what's involved with all these parts. It seems like it's, oh, you just paint it and you call it a day. Well, you know, you can. Um, the Campus 60 is, is, you know, it's not a show bike. It's not going to be a show bike. But I figured, well, you know, if I'm doing this, you know, I might as well kind of show you guys what's involved with, you know, painting some of this stuff. And, you know, the supplies you use, the equipment you use, the sandpaper you use, the paint you use, the thinners you use, um, all the different stuff, so, you know, you kind of get an idea. Uh, it's a little hobby of mine. Um, I think it turns out pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with the results. I gotta stop saying, saying um so much, too, but anyway. There's where we are on step one, and then when I get ready for step two and step three, I will fire up the camera and show you. I don't know if this camera is going to show the difference between step one, two, and three, but 
looking at it from my end, it's pretty shiny compared to how it looked like, uh, you know, when I sanded it with the uh, 2000 grit. So, anyway, I will be back here in a little bit. All right, back again. All right, we're making some progress on this thing. Um, I went ahead and I didn't record it, but I went ahead and did all the uh, sanding stages, 1,000, 1,500, uh, 2,000 grit. And then I went ahead and did the buffing stages of, well, what do I use? Actually, I got some new stuff coming. Uh, I think it's coming today. Uh, this Ultra Cut 105. Uh, I've got some new stuff I'm going to try. I do like the Meguiar's. And that is the uh, detailer. I'm gonna, I'll do a review on that. And this is the cutting compound. It's 100. So it's a little bit, little bit uh, grittier cut. But I've got everything, um, those steps done, one, two, and three. So I've been putting some things back together. As you see, we got a, we got a tail light, and we've got a swing arm. We have the brake lever hooked back up all the springs center stand and the tire front tire hence it's sitting on the table now i've got the horn hooked up uh, just gotta tighten that down i got the little rubber peg for the cables got the headlight bucket hooked up um still got it suspended by two wires i'm getting ready to take it off here in a minute got the uh triple tree buffed and uh put back on i did the bolts I uh, got those cleaned up, and what I did want to show was, let me see if I can find them here, my bag of parts. Let's see what we got here. These are the triple tree connectors and the handlebar doohickeys and this is the uh, center nut okay so you see the center nut here looks pretty pretty craptacular all right this was one that I've hit so far with the uh, prime pads so if you want to I just put them on my buffer go to primex.com Cameron's really helpful um, He's got a YouTube channel, does a bunch of stuff. So I'll come over here to the other part of here, other part of the garage. And this is just a buffer, buffing wheel. Cheap thing from Harbor Freight, works great. Uh, this is the fine pad, this is the coarse pad. And it will take that stuff right down and shine it right up for you. So yeah, we got, we got a bunch of stuff out here. It's a mess. That's the engine for it, the uh, campus. So anyway, if you hit it with the coarse one, uh, it'll take out any nicks and stuff you have in it. So this turned out pretty good, pretty happy with that. So, and this is the other one that hasn't been done. So I'll put them side by side as a comparison. So definitely shinier looking. So, and if you look at the top of this bolt here, and then we come over here and you look at the top of those bolts. You can definitely see a big difference. Uh, they turn out pretty good. So I've been doing all the bolts as I go through and put things back on. Did that one. Uh, did that one down there. And let's see here. I powder coated the uh, back part there. And then I took the buffing wheel to this, which is the brake switch. And here is the actual brake lever. Uh, I just took it to that to clean it up. And then I used my Dremel tool on the rims here, which, eh, it's okay. Uh, turned out a little bit better on that side. But, you know, um, as far as paint, turned out pretty good. I don't know if you can see that kind of run line in there. I tried to sand it out as best I could. I didn't catch it until after I started clearing it, but there was actually a run in the black. Um, but like I've said in my other stuff, I am definitely no professional, so I try my best. And these back parts here, I was really uh, shocked last night when I went to take this thing down and put it back on. This whole back piece right here 
and right here uh, I have no idea how I missed it when I was spraying but it didn't even have any paint on it so I just made up a batch you know about an ounce of paint put a little hardener in it and then just brushed it on and it actually turned out pretty good so no complaints but uh, you know this is not a concourse restoration by any stretch so I really don't care it looks good enough for us and I'm pretty happy with it I got to cut this wire here and uh, dig out my turn signals which I've got somewhere and they'll go one of them will go right here and then the uh, seat pan goes up here and then right through here so get that hooked up I did hook up the oil tank um, and if anybody messes with these those are M3 bolts got a little set from uh, e, uh, Amazon and that worked perfect instead of a cotter pin so got that done still got to tighten down the horn and the tank is the tanks ready to go I just need to wipe it down again but that chrome I got it's Eastwood chrome and I ordered it on Amazon and it was just canceled which they already notified me of it so I ordered it from Eastwood uh, directly but I think it's on back order so maybe a little bit for the tank to get done but I mean in the meantime I think it turned out pretty damn good uh, pretty happy with that and this is the other cover this is the cover for the uh, battery box turned out pretty good I had a this thing's plastic that had a chip right here and it got worse when I went to buff it because the buffer hit it and it chipped it off even more so I made a little paint up touched it up and it turned out pretty good but uh, if anybody wants to know the pads that I use the sequence that I use I use yellow for cutting then I'll use an orange pad uh, on step two and then I use my black pad on step three and then I use a ton of microfiber towels and I use clean ones for everything so not that that you know matters but so what else we got to do here oh I did retape I retaped this with some uh, wire loom tape and I really like this stuff it sticks really good and it looks looks really super nice so pretty happy with that but like I said, I got to cut this wire right here, cut this uh, plastic off here, which I'll end up retaping this. But I'm going to wire up the uh, turn signals. So I got to find them. I know they're right here in the garage here somewhere. And then the front turn signals go here, which I really could have probably hit this a little bit more on the grinder, you know, and clean that up. But got. Uh, everything back on it and it's kind of smudgy from my hands getting all over it but you can kind of see the fender and stuff it turned out really super good I'm really happy with that I don't know if ultimately we're going to do end up doing something with this lower front fork because I think it was chromed originally and somebody had painted it silver so I hadn't paid much attention to it and then I realized well maybe it was black maybe it was chrome but it is what it is for now so we'll leave it um got the foot pegs back on the rear sets got the lights coming down the wires coming down for the uh rear light um let's see and that's done so i'm just working on little odds and ends now i'm getting ready to, to attach the uh actually take it off the table and set it on the ground and start working on some more. I got a little bit of overspray here. I'm gonna take off with them. some lacquer thinner, clean that up so that looks a lot better. This is the uh, spark plug wire. And then start, uh, once I get it off the table, I got room on my table now. Uh, well, we'll hear it shortly. And I gotta bring the engine back out because I'm gonna put a new clutch in it because the clutch is slipping. So I may uh, video that process. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's not that hard to do so and then i still got the chain guards which are hanging right there there's one and right here is the other this is the inside piece and this is the outside piece and oh by the way um i showed you guys in an earlier video i don't know if you can see it right inside there that is that kvb um fiberglass patch and it turned out pretty good I mean you can see on here I got I do have some splatter from when I was sanding but 
it turned out pretty damn good. I'm pretty happy with that. That filled up really good because that's a pretty big, good size rust hole. Then I had another spot back in here that I filled. So that's good to go. So on here, here, down here, let me get this piece here. This is the uh, dusty, but this is the oil tank cover, which I got to put the knob back on. And that'll go right there like that. And won't that look sweet? All black, just like Palma wanted. So that's turned out pretty good. What else? What else do we got here? Like I said, I gotta tighten down the horn. Gotta put the, take it off the table here. That way I can set it on the ground. So I do have the center stand hooked up and the spring is attached so I can lay it and sit back down on the ground. And then I can work on putting the handlebars back in place, run the wiring back into the headlight bucket and get all that buttoned up and done and tighten down and I can get the back wheel back on I'll just leave the chain off um, just leave the back wheel slack and then uh, that way I can work on the engine and make some more progress so uh, stay tuned I'll be back here uh, well in your time before you know it well guys part 1000 of this video as you can see I got the triple tree done I got all the bolts done you know, got these clamps done, got the bolt heads done. And now the handlebars look like shit yeah, compared to the rest of the bike. Pardon my French. But these here, I still got to, I got to buff these out, clean those up. I'm not too worried about those. I can clean those up. They're aluminum. But the handlebars are chromed. And now I have a dilemma because... Even though I know this is not a show bike, I'm not happy with how that's looking. It looks like crap. So, let's stand back here, kind of take it in. So, that's what it's looking like. Of course, I can mock up the tank on there. Um, anyway, I was just thinking. So, I'm going to look at uh, calling this company tomorrow. Um, they're up in Ohio somewhere that does chroming and see how much it would cost to have these uh, handlebars chromed because, yeah, I mean, I know the paint's not perfect. I mean, I got mistakes here, mistakes there. Um, but that's no big deal. But those handlebars, now that, you know, I've got it all painted and everything is done on here, that just looks like crap, man not happy with it so anyway i just thought i'd video that and uh well, like i said i'll give them a holler i'm gonna try to give them a call tomorrow and see how much it costs to have these re-chromed because i mean i could powder coat them but it doesn't look like chrome i mean it's shiny but it's just like it looks like shiny silver so um and i don't know when i'll ever get that paint from eastwood and i don't even know if i'd want to put that on handlebars but you know I don't know, just thought I'd uh, put this on the video. I've seen that and I you know, just can't say I'm too happy with it. So, I mean, as it is, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'm just being too anal about crap, but, you know, um, I know I would mentioned uh, about sanding this down a little bit more, but yeah, speaking of which, I need to track down the turn signals. Stick one on there, and you probably won't even be able to notice that. But anyway, uh, just thought I'd throw that in there, so be back here in a bit.